Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and a pleasure to be able to take part in today's AgriTech Summit, with this year's event especially significant in view of the vital role that AgriTech is playing in ensuring our food security during the ongoing pandemic. Thank you to DP World, under the leadership of His Excellency Sultan Ahmed bin Sulayim, for hosting and organizing the AgriTech Summit 2021, which takes place at a time when the UAE is weathering one of the greatest challenges it has had to face since the formation of the Union 50 years ago. And as we celebrate our golden jubilee, we should take time to acknowledge the behind the scenes mechanisms that have kept food coming to our tables throughout this critical time as we look and plan for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the past months have truly been an experience filled with lessons learned. Having the political will of our leadership, having a plan, the national food security strategy, and having a strong communication platform, the Emirates Food Security Council, were key elements in maneuvering through the many challenges that came our way. Our national food security strategy served as a roadmap during this time, and Agritech being an essential plank of this strategy enabled us to increase our domestic food production while minimizing the use of water, our most precious of all resources. Food security forms a nexus with water security and energy, so it's essential we ensure a balance that is sustainable. Enabling the ag tech sector supports our food security agenda by reducing our dependency on the global food chains that are so vulnerable to disruptions created by crises such as the one we are currently experiencing today. In short, agri-tech is one of the key drivers to enhance food security. We can see how agri-tech is transforming the UAE through the country's growing landscape of Controlled Environment Agriculture, also known as CEAs, in the form of indoor greenhouses, RAS systems, and polytunnels that typically use 95% less water than traditional farms. Local markets, grocery stores, and supermarkets are now able to offer customers high quality grown in the UAE produce, including a number of vegetables, leafy greens, microgreens, herbs, tomatoes, fruits, berries, and fish. Controlled environment agriculture is creating a bountiful harvest all year round without the need for arable land and without the use of chemicals or pesticides. One of our biggest agri-tech success stories has been the huge growth of our aquaculture sector, which is now helping to meet the UAE's strong demand for seafood. Thanks to aquacultural initiatives that include recycling water, we are now sustainably producing species such as salmon, sea bream, sea bass, hamur, shrimp from the heart of the desert. Each and every one of these achievements has been made possible from the concerted efforts of an array of food security stakeholders, from the establishment of the agri-tech sector development team, a body comprising of the public and private sector stakeholders who have examined ways of applying the latest technological means, scientific methods, and policy developments to enhance the overall food security system. From the government departments that developed the accelerator programs that sowed the seeds for a vibrant UAE agritech sector, to the entrepreneurs and innovators that have injected fresh ideas to disrupt existing inefficient food ecosystems, to the scientists and agri-technologists that are elevating the UAE as one of the world's leading hubs for innovation-driven food security. Companies operating in the food and beverage sector are among those unsung heroes driving the UAE's ag-tech sector forward. They are at the sharp end of creating the innovation-driven food security solutions that are ensuring the supply of safe, sufficient, and nutritious food for the UAE. The private sector is always quick to respond and collaborate, and we are now seeing the fruits of this engagement. Its disruptive qualities shaking up old and inefficient systems and creating 
versatile, flexible, and more resilient agricultural methods that are the future of food security, not just for the UAE, but for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, the UAE's 50th anniversary is expected to be the year that we hopefully will finally bring the pandemic to a close. Although it's clear that its legacy will linger, this is no time to rest. We need all stakeholders to redouble their efforts and ensure we can successfully navigate any future crises that comes our way. There is still a lot to do while we transform our food systems together to more sustainable ones. I thank all of our partners across every sector of the UAE's food ecosystem for the vital roles that they are playing in ensuring food security for all. I look forward to continuing to work with you as we move into our next 50 years. Thank you all and keep safe. Well, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, we will now move on to look at some of the important industry and technology trends uh, that will be shaping the food security sector uh, in the years ahead. And I'm delighted to be joined by Henry Gordon Smith, who is the founder and chief executive officer of Agritecture Consulting. Hi, Henry. Great to have you with us today. Uh, I hope that you are well. Great to see you, Richard. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, it, perhaps we could just start um, with a little bit, if you can briefly summarize the sort of work that Agritecture Consulting does, um, and particularly in the Middle East region. I know that you do a lot of advisory work out here with both the government and the, uh, the private sector on food security. So perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about this, what you are seeing in the UAE in the Middle East at the moment. Yeah, so my team at Agritech started in 2014, and we're very passionate about bringing agriculture closer to consumers in cities. And so we work with a lot of technologies to improve food security by growing food closer to cities. We design the farms, we provide feasibility studies, market studies, and we do due diligence on them to drive strategy for that. In the Middle East, we've had a great pleasure of working on all kinds of vertical farms and greenhouses in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain. We've done some work in Jordan, the UAE, of course, we've been able to work there quite a bit. And so it's been exciting to work across the GCC in the Middle East to see some of the differences and similarities in those challenges. But essentially, agriculture consulting serves to provide data and strategy to guide some of these decisions as we try to move towards food security. Uh, as you know, you know, this is a the Middle East is an, an arid, water scarce part of the world. It's a desert landscape, you know, agriculture and water security and food security have always been um, uh, very important and difficult and sensitive issues. What has changed? Why, why do you think we are now getting this increased attention? Is it because of climate change? Is it because of what we've seen through COVID? Or is it some, you know, to do with the innovations in the technology side? Yeah, I think that beyond the issues with the lack of arable land and water and climate, um, which is, it's been fine to import that food, but essentially as climate change has gotten worse, these microclimates around the world that are critical to produce certain types of food are at threat and agriculture can't really catch up with that. You add on top of that increasing population, there's a growing demand for quality food. So now the UAE and other countries have to compete on the global stage for trade to get these products. Now, they have the ability to compete with that now with the abundance of hydrocarbons and financing. But in the long term, I think Her Excellency and all the leadership know that there's a need to diversify. If we look at COVID, it's just an example of shocks in the system. So in addition to the long-term threats to food security that's happening and that dependence on imports, you could have a shock like COVID that affects supply chains. And that creates a lack of confidence in the community and the residents themselves, which is certainly not what you want when it comes to food, especially. So it's really a combination of these factors that's making the risk of simply depending upon importing food higher than it's ever been before. So in the UAE, and, and I guess most of the Gulf region will be in a similar position, something like 95% of uh, food comes from imports. You know, it's a, it's a very, very high percentage. Clearly, um, a lot has to change to become more self-sufficient. Where do you see the, the opportunities for the UAE and for other uh, governments and, and markets in this region to become more self-sufficient? 
Yeah, so whether it's been in Saudi Arabia, the UAE, or any other country in the GCC, the place we really begin with is the talent. If you think about the food system, there's this foundation, which is experience and knowledge. Agriculture is something that takes time to be good at. Technology doesn't solve that problem entirely. So really the best place to start is investing in youth and investing in youth's understanding and vision of how they can be part of the food security solution. If you don't have a society that values agriculture and values farmers, how are you gonna have a food secure future? Everything is gonna be a little bit of a band-aid to get you along the way there, whether it's incentives, free zones, technologies, these are all just band-aids to fix the problem in the short term. But in the long term, you need to really create a society and a culture for this. And look, the UAE isn't alone in this. If you look in the United States, 100 years ago, over 60% of the population was involved in agriculture. Now it's less than 5%. So this is something that's happening globally. We're not valuing farmers in the way we used to. We're not teaching our children that agriculture is a viable livelihood. So we have to transform that. And that begins with training and, and education, especially. But what does that mean? I mean, historically, if you, you mentioned America just now. So you have huge tracts of arable farmland. You know, that you don't have that in the Middle East. You've got desert. So farming is something different, you know, whether it's urban farms or vertical farms yeah. or I don't know. You know. So what these young people, these skills that you're advising that we invest in, what jobs will they be taken into? I mean, will it be software design in agriculture or you know, where are the skills needed? Well, I think one of the key differences now is, is just like you said, with technology, we can do a lot more with less. And so when we think about the jobs in the Middle East, I see it more as a lot of new CEO roles as well, kind of running agricultural companies, using technologies and matching them to grow food in the desert and to adapt. So there's a number of different ways. For example, there's a whole suite of crops that are not popularized in the UAE market, halophytes, things like um, sea asparagus. There could be a whole business around growing alternative crops that grow on salt water and could be developed and marketed in, into the community. So you could have an, an Emirati learn about these types of crops, understand the technologies to grow them, build the business case and work with retail and commercial and marketing partners to deploy that. That would be a meaningful food security solution. But where does it begin? I think it begins with a college, an institution, a training program that helps them think big in that way, helps them find the balance between business, you know, climate challenges, agricultural operations and technology to develop these ideas for the future. That's how we localize the solutions. That's how we, we help that society be more effective on its own. So I think that technology plays a really critical role in this when it's combined with sort of the practices. And so what agritecture does a lot of is we track sort of the journey of an entrepreneur to become successful in the sector. What are the key things they need to learn? What are the key networks they need to build? What are the key technologies they need to engage in? And we're trying to kind of help governments foster that, including our clients that are developing farms in the UAE or across the region itself. What are the key steps and methods that we teach them first? That's what I mean by the education, the training primarily. And there are ways to do it. I think there's a lot of innovation still coming and there's potential to green the desert with agriculture. And do, I mean, do you have much sight of what uh, training and educational facilities are available in the UAE? Uh, if we focus on the UAE for the moment, what, what's available today for you know, a, a college level education in the agricultural sector? Is there anything? In the UAE specifically, there is, is very little. I, I know Her Excellency is working on this a lot. You've got workshops, you've got specialized events related to this. There's a lot of engagement of youth, but you've got kind of, I think, different things happening. You sort of have some educational institutions that are exploring sustainability and, and much more theoretical applications of agriculture. Then you have some you know, aspects of training on certain farms. It's, I think it's very minimal. And then you have research institutions like ICPA they're developing meaningful research. What I think is needed is, is a more connected, comprehensive approach here. Um, and I'd like to see that embedded into some of the free zones where you have international companies bringing technology and that can be passed on to the Emiratis. So think of like a, a, almost like a food and agriculture campus where youth have a big part of that to provide some of the labor and to make sure that that knowledge being transferred from other countries that may have more experience than the UAE due to their head start on food security. That's sort of the vision that I'm trying to share. But look, a lot of this can happen online. You know, there's ways to do a lot of online commercial classes around this. 
technology education, business planning classes that are very important for this. Most Emiratis don't see themselves as the farmers. They're going to see themselves as the farm operators or the farm executives. So I think it's, it's a combination, again, of, of learning some of the best practices in agriculture and some of the business education that already exists in the region. Now, when, when I think of agri-tech, uh, uh, sorry, agri-tech, um, <laughs> For some reason, I automatically think of vertical farms and you know banks of of these kind of hydroponics growing. But my understanding is that largely that's for sort of leafy greens, lettuces, and things. Now you can't build a whole agricultural sector around that. So where do you see you know as an expert, um, where are the sort of key tech opportunities? Is it vertical farms or is it somewhere else? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So vertical farming is really one of the most high-tech forms of growing certain crops indoors. And, and what's great is it, it's, it's really uh, immune to weather and any challenges outside, which is ideal for, for the Emirates itself. But the problem there is it only grows about a, a small selection of crops, uh, which are important for vitamins and nutrition, but not really for the calories you need for food security. So it's really a complement to the system. I'm a big fan of greenhouses. I think greenhouses is an established long-term technology we can grow a much wider variety of crops. The, the challenge in the UAE with that are, are, are very high to maintain the climates needed in the greenhouse. You can imagine sunlight and humidity going in that affects the, the climate control abilities and increases the cost. But there's innovation that can happen around that, right? There's innovation around using seawater, there's innovation around cooling strategies, shading strategies, and the lines between vertical farming and greenhouses are starting to be blurred by some of the greenhouse greenhouse operators that we've consulted in, in the Emirates specifically. And that's what's really important to remember is when a society doesn't have a lot of agriculture, beginning to engage in it starts to create this spillover of tech and innovation that creates that foundation where you can find the localized solution that's needed. So we're really just at the beginning and that's why embracing vertical farming is very important. And that's why also embracing greenhouses and adapting them is very important. But look, long-term, the UAE will not be able to produce all of its own food because the climate is going to get tougher, not easier. So it's going to be extremely difficult to do that. But there are other exciting technologies. We're seeing China's doing some interesting work to convert desert land into agriculture. We have seen evidence that you can do a lot more work with, with seawater for outdoor production as well. So I think it's going to be also about adapting the diet. You know, we've, we've created a culture where we buy whatever we want, eat whatever we want, whatever we want. Vertical farming allows that, but again, only for leafy greens and maybe some berries in the future. So I think for some of those other crops that we are used to having at different times a year, we may need to sacrifice that. And there is some soil production that's seasonal that's possible in the Emirates, which is also really promising if we look at Emirates Biofarm. So we shouldn't forget that if we do live a more seasonal lifestyle as far as consumption is concerned, that is another major way to solve food security challenges beyond just trying to grow more food and throwing more tech at the problem. I, I wonder in terms of a sort of strategic response to food security, how much is down to the production side, which you've just talked about, you know, the, the tech, how much is on the consumption side and getting people to sort of consume more balanced, better diets? How much is due to waste on the logistics side? You know, where, if you drew a pie chart, where, how would it segment up between the sort of the key areas? Well, I think when it comes to the, the UAE, the, the waste category is a really big one. The UAE along with Saudi Arabia are, are at the top of the list with waste from food. So the culture of consumption needs to shift when it comes to food as part of food security. Um, globally, this is an issue. We know we produce enough food to feed everyone. It's a matter of distribution as well. So it's not like we're, we've run out of food globally yet. So you know, we really do need to focus on consumption as a good starting point. And that's the, a more challenging one, right? It's easier to say, hey, let's open up investment and let's grow more food, but not solve the waste problem. But again, I think this is something that the leadership in the UAE is very focused on and trying to make efforts to communicate, you know, eat less, change the culture of waste. Uh, I think there's been a number of events and even um, art exhibits related to this topic to sort of help consumers understand that as well. So I think that that's a really, really important one. Um, to tackle waste reduction itself. Very important. Okay. I, if, I, if I was to say, it, it would be as important as increasing production. Okay, thank you. Now, one final question. I want you to sort of gaze into your crystal ball 10 years down the line. Where do you see 
the UAE GCC food security sector in 10 years? You know, how do you think it's going to change? I think that there is going to be this aspect of these free zones that have been commonly developed for other sectors that are going to evolve to include food and ag tech. And I think that's going to be a very exciting moment. The first few are going to have probably be opened in the next few years. And they're going to have a little bit of a stumbling period as they get used to it, because agriculture is different from even other logistics or other solutions. But then after that, I think what will happen is other GCC states will copy. I expect the Emirates will be first with this, but I think Oman with its new railroad and its strategic access is going to be very focused on this as well to develop some of these food zones. And if you look internationally, there's really no better place for some of these technologies to be proven than in the Middle East. So there's a lot of international companies that I think are very eager to get involved in these free zones. Um, I, I think there needs to be a lot more investment education. My concern is that there'll be an issue in five years from now is as there's more and more farms, the talent is gonna be dependent upon importing that talent. And I think that the UAE especially can do a lot to solve that problem in the early days with education. We need to spend the next five years training the next generation of operators. We need to change the culture of that as well to help be more executives and CEOs and leadership because we're gonna have an issue where we have workforce development challenges. In the United States, it's very difficult to find a quality vertical farm operator because there's not that many vertical farmers. So even though the investment is going up, there's actually a lot of issue. A lot of people contact agriculture for recruiting because they can't find that talent or they have to develop really expensive training programs in-house. So I suspect we're gonna have a really big increase and then a slowdown because that foundational aspect of talent isn't there, unfortunately, that's my prediction. Well, Henry Gordon-Smith, founder and chief executive officer of Agritecture Consulting, thank you so much for your time and for those uh, insights uh, into some of the key sort of industry trends uh, affecting the food security sector in the UAE and the GCC. Thank you again. Thanks so much, Richard. Take care, have a good event.